Welcome to How To Videos with Dr. Amy Gates. This video is going to focus on an introduction to StatCrunch and is for people who have never used StatCrunch before or who are relatively new to StatCrunch. The topics of this video are going to be how to put data into StatCrunch and then how to perform just some very basic statistical calculations on that data. So when you open StatCrunch, depending on uh, how you have access to it because it is a Pearson product, you can put data into StatCrunch uh, simply by clicking. It's very straightforward and very easy to use. So if you click above here on the variable area, so normally this would just be labeled as variable one, and actually it looked like this before I made any changes to it. If you click in there, you can name your variable anything you want. It's best to name your variables, although you don't have to. So I named this variable ID, and then with the same ID, I went ahead and clicked in all the boxes underneath of here and put in my data. So I went ahead and typed it in. This is not the only way to get data into StatCrunch. You can upload data from Excel and from other programs, but this is an introductory video, and so is for people who are just getting started and just want to be able to type their data in and make some quick calculations. Again, you can paste from Excel as well. So once you've got your data entered by typing it in or pasting it in, and you've got all your variables created, you can do a number of very straightforward operations. I'm going to start with the button up here called Stat. If you click on Stat, and then you just really explore the options, you can see right away that there are different things that you can calculate depending on how advanced you are in your statistics class and what you're looking to do. I want to focus today on summary statistics. These are things like mean, median, mode, variance, standard deviation, range, uh, etc. You can take a summary statistic of either a column of your data or a row of your data. And so this is maybe the first part that's a little bit confusing for people who are new to StatCrunch. When you first see columns and rows, it's not clear what that is. But what that is exactly is if you wanted to take the mean, for example, of the age of all the people in your data set, that would be a column. But I may also have very different data, and my row information may be something that I would like to take the mean or the median of. In my case, and given the way that I've organized my data, my data is very column-based. Each one of my variables is defined as one single column, and each one of those variables has its own data. So the, the age variable has its data in the age column and so on. So if I wanted to do some statistics on my data, I'm going to be using summary stats and then columns because that's the way my data is organized. Now when I do this, it pulls up a box that asks me questions like, which one of your variables do you want to do uh, evaluations on? Do you want to build any interesting uh, formulas? Like, do you want to do an evaluation on age, but do you only want the age of your females, or the age of your males, or the age of people who have completed more than 12 classes, or so on? So this allows you to not only do calculations, but to affect the particular calculations. So you have a where, you have a group by, and these are the different things you can calculate in the summary stats area. N is the size of your sample. Mean is the average. Variance is a measure of how your data varies from the mean. The standard deviation is the square root of the variance. You also can calculate a standard error, the median, the range, your min value, your max value, the first quartile, which is the first the value that is the first 25% of your data, the third quartile, which is the value of your data for which 75% of your data is less than, and so on. And you can add, you can add percentiles, like maybe you want the 90th percentile of your data, and so on. So let's do this a couple of times with some different examples. Let's start simple, we'll just have the age as the only variable, and let's go ahead and choose many things. So what you can see now is that all of the options over here that are in blue are already over here in the right. So if I just click Compute, I'm already going to automatically get the mean, variance, standard deviation, error, all of these goodies are going to get calculated for age. But maybe I want a few more. 
interquartile range is going to be the values that are between Q1 and Q3, for example. The skewness, the kurtosis. So depending on how advanced you are, there are some extra options here that you can choose, and then you can move those options over to this side. Now interestingly, and StatCrunch is a little counterintuitive this way, notice what happened when I clicked the interquartile range, or IQR. I clicked it, it went over here, and what did it do to me? it got rid of everything else I had, which is not what I want, but is a common error in StatCrunch. The trick to using StatCrunch, if you're using a PC, is if you want more than one option, whether it's more than one statistical calculation, or whether it's more than one variable, you have to use the control key on your keyboard. So if I hold down control on my keyboard, which you can't see, but I'm doing it, and then I click N, it moves both over. I'm still holding control. If I continue to hold control, I can choose as many of these as I want. That's how you get StatCrunch to give you more than one option. I've now released control, and here are all the things that I've selected. I can do the same thing up here. If I were to just click year, notice it switches year and age and only allows me to put one variable over to the right. Well, maybe I don't want to waste my time going through all of this for each individual variable. Maybe I want all my variables to be evaluated for all of these statistical items. In that case, again, I use the control button. If you have a Macintosh computer, you use command instead of control. So for a PC, it's control, and you have to hold it down whenever you want to put other variables in. So that's how I'm getting all these other variables to appear over here is I'm holding the control button down. So once I've selected all my variables using control to choose more than one, and once I've selected all the statistical calculations I want StatCrunch to perform, again using control to select more than one, I can then click compute. And StatCrunch will output the full results for all the variables I selected, and for all the statistical items that I chose. So let's look at some of these results. GPA for a student is a quantitative value because it represents quantity. It's a real numerical value. I can say that one person's GPA, like person number one, is higher or better or greater than another person's GPA. These have real numerical meaning. GPA it's debatable whether it's continuous or discrete. I consider it a continuous value, but a value that is rounded to two decimal places. If you have another instructor who has their own opinion, your best bet, always ask the person who's grading your papers. So in my opinion, this is continuous because GPA can have any value, any decimal value, but it's always rounded up to the nearest two decimal places. So GPA, quantitative and continuous. Here's our mean GPA, which is the average for our group. Here's our variance or variation. Here's our standard deviation, which is the square root of the variance. Here's our median. Here's our range, and so on and so forth. And the end tells us how many values we had, which we know is 10, so that's correct. Next is our age variable. Our age is actually listed in seemingly whole numbers. Like when someone comes up to you and says, how old are you? You generally just say, oh, I'm 26, oh, I'm 43. You don't say, I am 42.78978. You don't, you don't answer that way. However, that being said, age is continuous. We continue to age every nanosecond, every picosecond, and except when you deal with quantum mechanics, we consider age to be a continuous quantitative variable. So another example of continuous and quantitative. It's a real quantity. Some people are in fact older than other people. Our next variable is called ID. Now with respect to ID, ID is qualitative. It's just a number that represents our people so that we don't have their real names here. These numbers don't mean anything numerically. One number isn't greater than the other, like student number one is not greater or bigger than student number two just because their ID is a larger number. These are categorical. 
they're nominal, they're qualitative, and they are discrete. So ID is a very different type of variable than, say, age or GPA. And what's interesting about that is when we look at, say, the mean ID, that's not a useful statistical value for us. Mean doesn't tell us anything about a variable type that is qualitative, discrete, and nominal. What, is, what does that mean to us? What does this mean to us? It doesn't mean anything. In fact, these values are all whole values. There's no ID that's 4537.694. So again, these are qualitative, discrete, and nominal. They have no order. They have no numerical meaning. They're just categories or names. But we're using numbers to represent those names. So in some cases, you'll find that some statistical measures, like mean, for example, are very useful and appropriate for, say, continuous or quantitative data. So the mean GPA, that's useful for us. We can see that 2.967 tells us that the mean GPA is approximately a B, a low B. Same thing for age. The mean actually gives us information. This tells us that the mean or the average age of our group is about 43 and change. But for ID, the mean is not a useful measure. It doesn't really tell us anything because that variable is qualitative, discrete, and nominal. The variable called year represents the year a student is in school. So one represents a freshman, two represents a sophomore, three represents a junior, and four represents a senior. Again, this is qualitative. These aren't real, real numbers. You can't add a freshman and a sophomore together and get a junior. That doesn't make any sense. These aren't actual numbers per se. They are categories. They are names. That number one represents freshmen. It doesn't represent a value. So again, qualitative and discrete. But this data is ordinal. It's ordinal. It's not nominal. And why is it ordinal? Because freshmen do come before sophomores. There's an order there. Sophomores do come before juniors, and juniors do come before seniors. So because this data has an implicit order, it's considered ordinal data. So qualitative, ordinal, and discrete. Okay, what about gender? Instead of using numbers for gender, which I could have done, I could have made females a one and males a two, I decided to use a string or a character set or a word to represent gender. These things all mean the same thing. So I use fem for female and male for male. Now this makes perfect sense to us because we know what this means. Gender is qualitative, it's discrete, and it's nominal. And it's nominal because there's no implicit order here. Nothing's first or before or anything like that. These are all names. Again, when it comes to gender, and let's find, oh, we didn't, did we not put gender on our, our list? No, we didn't put gender on our list. Okay, so we can't look at the results here. But the idea would be the same. If we did have gender here on our list, the mean value would be meaningless. So sometimes numerical measures like mean, variance, median, standard deviation, sometimes they're useful, appropriate, and sometimes they give us nothing. They tell us no information. So what have we learned here today? We've learned that we can open StatCrunch and create variables very simply by typing them in, and we can put data in columns under each variable. It's important to know the type of your variable. Is your variable qualitative or quantitative? Is your variable discrete or continuous? Is your variable nominal, ordinal, interval, or ratio? And what kind of numerical measures or statistical analysis do you want to perform on that variable? Which ones are appropriate and which ones don't give you any useful information about that variable? To do basic statistics, we click Stat, Summary Stats, and Columns. We use the control button to select multiple variables, any variables we want. We can use the control button to add or remove variables from this list over here. And we click compute 
to get our result. So that's it for this first lesson, and we'll be back for more next time. Thanks for joining me.